Hi, welcome to Full Frontal. I'm Samantha B. And if you're like me, you're just a few weeks away from having fewer human rights. Fun! According to a draft Supreme Court majority opinion obtained by Politico, a decision has been made to overturn the landmark Roe v. Wade ruling. In the leaked document, Justice Samuel Alito writes in part, Roe was egregiously wrong from the start. That's right, baby. The Supreme Court is going to force you to have that baby. Side note, when this draft opinion was leaked on May 2nd, our show was actually on hiatus, a hiatus that started on May 2nd. Just a beautiful day to kick back, enjoy the sun, and burn our throats to dust with endless screaming. While the opinion isn't official yet, it's basically a trailer for how f***ing horrible life is to become for a lot of people. In a nutshell, if unchanged, the opinion would go against 50 years of precedent by allowing each state to decide whether to restrict or ban abortion. The leaked opinion is infuriating, not just because it strips away reproductive rights. Justice Alito's opinion cites a shithead from the 17th goddamn century who defended marital rape and had women executed for witchcraft, or as more than half of the Supreme Court calls that, not far enough. And that's not even the oldest weird shit Alito cites. His ass went back to abortion law in the 13th century. Now look, I'm not a legal expert, though I did play one in a never made pilot for freeform, but I think we can limit precedents that control human bodies to after the same century that Genghis Khan did his thing. Alito's opinion makes the argument that abortion isn't protected because it's not referenced in the Constitution. But you know what else isn't mentioned in the Constitution? Cars or hamburgers or and brazzers, which thank God, because that's the only way I've got left to relax. I like it when they kiss, even if they are stepfather and stepdaughter. I just love love. A majority of Americans believe the Supreme Court should uphold Roe, so it's no surprise that protesters have flocked to both the Supreme Court and the homes of the justices, destroying our rights. And even less surprisingly, it took no time at all for conservatives to recast themselves as the real victims. Trying to scare federal judges into ruling a certain way, it is an attempt to replace the rule of law with the rule of mobs. The issue of doxing and the protesting, I call it intimidation and harassment of Supreme, Supreme Court justices. I think it is a form of terrorism. It is an open effort to intimidate Supreme Court justices. It's illegal, it's improper. Find a public place, get a permit, do it lawfully, and um, that, I mean, that, that, that's the way political discourse or disagreement is, should be handled with, with civility. Pardon me, but in my civilest way possible, may I humbly request that you f the f off? How dare Republicans demand civility as they strip away our civil rights? When Susan Collins gets a sidewalk full of bubble letter chalk, she is not the victim. When Amy Coney Barrett's tacky ass McMansion is visited by a pack of roaming handmaids, she is not the victim. The real victims in this atrocity of a court decision will be the people who live in the more than 20 states that would ban abortion after Roe is overturned. It is the person who, if certain lawmakers had their way, could be charged with homicide for having a procedure that has been constitutionally protected for nearly half a century. It's a woman in Texas with an ectopic pregnancy who could die because her doctor and pharmacist are afraid to give her the treatment she needs to save her life. It's someone in Arizona who was raped and is now forced to carry a pregnancy that will punish and traumatize them just for being a victim. It's people of color who will depressingly bear the greatest brunt of reproductive decisions made by men who, as best I can tell, believe women lay eggs. It is the more than 30 million people across the country who will be forbidden to make choices about their own bodies because our broken, corrupt Supreme Court cares more about a cluster of cells than it does about the actual people who live and breathe and exist in our country. These people are not pro-life. Justice Alito's draft opinion may rant and rave for 98 pages, but when it comes to kids after they're born, it's really down to just three words. And of course, we know abortion rates won't drop. The only difference is that people, especially people of color, especially people living in poverty, will die. As of right now, it is unlikely justices will change their vote, and that feels hopeless, especially considering the fact that our bodies are going to be officially worth less than the opinion of a guy from the 1600s with a f***ing soul patch. I know being told to vote blue no matter who is soul-crushing, especially since one of those blue joined Republicans to kill the bill protecting reproductive rights. It sucks an ass so big it would kill Sir Mix-a-Lot. 
But unfortunately, we cannot give up. We've got to protect people's access to abortion pills. We've got to support abortion funds. And we've got to keep pressuring the government officials who work for us to protect rights that we fought for and that, again, the majority of Americans f***ing want. Because if they're taking away our right to choose, fighting is the only choice we've got left. We'll be right back. Woo!